Hello my soccer universe and let's talk the conference league again this will usually be the shorter video but I have to say uh, while there is one of the top teams already exiting the competition at the group stage at least one of the leagues that I'm covering at Z uh, we get quite a few interesting teams from the Europa League into uh, the conference league which I think will make the competition a whole lot more exciting especially one very very huge name is in there but also uh the last group games had quite some uh interesting results as well so you know I would let's start with the early games and we have to start with uh pro probably the biggest game with me which was of course lega Warsaw against az for a spot in the knockout round uh it was basically az needed, needed to win there they never really got close uh, it was all repaired in the 34th minute gave them uh the lead the uh, legacy with a raucous cr uh, crowd behind them and then martin's indy uh is set, is set for a really rough tackle uh and with 10 men you're not gonna do it and krama uh sets lega Varsha through to the next round they're second in this is group because aston villa gets the one point although i think they even won the head to head but uh, we, we will we would have to have to check that but as aston villa get the points so they had head have lega Warsaw. so it's only a point uh, against rinsky mostar but then again you know they were not playing the full squad Saniolo scores his first goal for Est Milan and Zerinsky Mosca getting the equalizer. In Group F, Fiorentina needed to avoid defeat in Budapest to win the group. And that's exactly what they got. Yes, they found themselves down the right after uh, the halftime. But Ranieri in the 73rd gets an equalizer for Fiorentina in a, a really uh, tight very competitive game that also meant that uh, there was not much hope for Genk that even with the win uh, they, they were hoping the Fiorentina would win that they can overtake Ferencvar but Genk only get a 2-0 over Kucha, Kucha Kucharicki Chukaricki I um, keep continuing to pronounce it wrong um, and they're moving on we had everything decided already in group G Aberdeen though exits the uh, group stage with a win 2-0 over Eintracht Frankfurt, again after the 5-1 over Bayern, now the 0-2, but you know, it was a, um, a dead rubber, so I don't want to put too much on it, and Pauk against uh, Helsinki, similarly, uh, was also a tight, um, you know, at times, I think Helsinki took, took the lead, but Pauk turned, turned, turned around, and so uh, they go out to a 4 4 to win a really impressive uh, group stage by Pauk, I have to say, let's see where this goes. Um, Further, they actually can skip around, winning the group ahead of Eintracht Frankfurt. And then there was the drama in Group H, where uh, Nordjylland, after beating Ludogorets and Fenerbahce by huge scorelines at home, looked like they are set on to the next, next round. Fenerbahce kept their hopes alive with a 4-0 over Spartak Trunova, and it turns out that this actually sees them through based on goal difference to win this group because Ludo Goretz beat Nordjylland and that was all they needed. I mean, Nordjylland had actually good chances in there, but lay, uh, later on it's Piotrowski uh, with a slightly deflected shot that gets the win for Ludo Goretz. And so Nordjylland with an incredible goal difference of plus 10 are out of the competition. They're out of the competition. It, it is really, really staggering. And I think it's the draw against Sporta Kirnova that really undid me because otherwise everyone will, will, will be on 12 points. Uh, it's a quite amazing group. Uh, just when you look at it, 13-11 uh, for Fenerbahce, goal the difference, 11-11 for Ludo Goretz and 17-7 for Nordjylland. Sorry, I actually, while I think it was a really interesting group uh, and I think we had the big name moving on and you know, me having some Bulgarian connection, I'm not unhappy. I'm a little bit sad that with Nordjylland we lose a, actually quite a good team throughout the group stage. Then in the later games, we had Lille beating Klaxvik. Their story, uh, we already knew that ended with three penalties. A really, really weird one, that one. It, it has, 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 as we said, and then Klaxvik for uh, got, got him two red cards. It was a little bit exiting in the ignominy, ignominy. And then uh, Olympia Ljubljana get a surprise win 2-1 at Slovan Bratislava. We are also Maccabi Tel Aviv, they got a nil, um, We also have Maccabi Tel Aviv getting a huge win over Ghent, 3-1 at home, which means that they actually win this group and uh, that uh, playing on neutral ground. So pretty exciting uh, part there. Maccabi Tel Aviv, of course, uh, playing in Israel, Kalas and uh, Sahavi, 
the big Israeli star uh, scoring also the goals for Maccabi Tel Aviv uh, in the dead row was already a played a blick for nil uh, another uh, dead row was Victoria Pilsen's 3 nil of Astana but then we had a head-to-head for uh, Dinamo Zagreb against Balkany, it was a game where, uh, despite a lot of possession, Zagreb couldn't get, get anything going. Then the three goals came in relatively short peer period late, uh, and they beat Balkany 3 0 and are moving on to the playoff round. And then lastly, we had a head to head for a group win between Club Bruges and Bordeaux Glimt. Uh, while Glimt needed to probably win that, uh, needed to win, win it one. It was never really in the cards. Club Bruges better. Yes, Pellegrino equalized for uh, Bordeaux, but 10 seconds of the key kick of Thiago re-establishes the lead for Club Bruges and then uh, they see it on, on 3-1. And in another dead row, Besiktas spielt Lugano. Remember, this was the really, really crazy, crazy game um, in the, on the first match day. Now it is just a 2-0 uh, for Besiktas and Besiktas uh, just ahead of Lugano. But, you know, it's a very, very disappointing campaign for the Turkish Giants. So if we look ahead to Monday's draws, we already know which teams finished second. Let's look at the teams that came down from the Europa League, which probably if you watch my Europa League review video, you also have seen. We have Olympiacos, Ajax, really big name. We have Betis, uh, a team from Spain is doing really well. Sturm Graz, probably a so-and-so uh, team. We have Union saint Gilloise, probably also could run for something. We have another Israeli team with Maccabi Haifa. We have Servet from Switzerland. We have Molde in there which actually means we have two restrictions in, in the draw we can of course Ghent cannot play another Belgian opponent in Union and we have two Norwegian teams in there between Bode Klimt and Molde so that I think is also in interesting but you know it's a relatively uninteresting draw in that sense Basically, Bordeaux Glimt and Union saint Las is a matchup that is a little bit more likely. Same thing with Ghent against Molde because the, of the Belgian and Norwegian restrictions. The draw, as I said, will happen on Monday. I am really cu uh, cu curious what we'll get. I think there are some interesting uh, matchups in there, like Eintracht Ajax. with something that I don't necessarily want to see, but would be, of course, a blockbuster uh, for sure. And ahead of this draw, let's look also at the favorites. Now that we know among these teams, we will find the winner. And of course, the big favorite is Aston Villa. I mean, third in the Premier League. And although the Premier League have been losing teams in the Champ Ch Ch Champions League, uh, Premier League teams have been doing well in the Conference League, at least reaching the semifinals every time. Fiorentina is the second favorite. Also doesn't come unexpected. And then there's Lille in there. They are a little bit more over Betis because they are already in the round of 16. Betis need to march through the playoff where they will be, of course, favored. And the same thing goes for Eintracht Ajax and uh, Union Saint-Julas. Interestingly, Ajax and Union Saint-Julas are very, very similar. Of the teams that are in the playoffs, we see Pauk, Pilsen and Maccabi Tel Aviv not as highly rated. But don't underestimate these. I think we will see at least one surprise in the quarters for sure because, you know, with such an open draw, that's what it, how it work, works out. It's also the last kind of open draw that we have because the next time around uh, we'll play in the same Swiss system as the Championships League. We know there that uh, there will be a seeding system that decides who will play against whom, which I think is also in, in, in interesting, but undoes the need for a draw, which is a little bit sad, to be honest. But yeah, that was it from me from last one from the Conference League uh, group stage. Let me know if you have a team in there, how you're satisfied with their performance. Who do you think will go on to win? Will it be one of the top three favorites? Or do you think that Betis or another team, Ajax, could make a deep run? Uh, to me, of the remaining teams, Ajax is definitely the biggest name, but they're not the biggest team. And given their recent failings, but yeah, I guess they're finding a little bit uh, back on track. Let's see how it, how it goes. In any case, I will surely talk to you soon about more conference <laughs> the next time when we talk about the draw. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.